Um, so again, I'm Steve Dignan, um, or Steven. Um, from the Beijing campus, and so uh, they asked me to talk a little bit about PowerSchool um, and what we use PowerSchool for. Um, so the first kind of question then is, what is PowerSchool? Um, and it's a student information system, and so it's a basic repository for all information about the student's entire life within uh, one database program. Um, so from grading to academic, progress to discipline to every small little piece that we can cram in there uh, to connect and find trends um, and have a more efficient way to communicate within, with students and with parents. Um, so a little bit the history of PowerSchool. Uh, when it was first started it was a program designed for scheduling and making the master schedule of the uh, students um, and that was back in 1997. Then Apple bought it, and then Pearson bought it from Apple, and then uh, it uh, became its own company again <laughs> in 2016. And since that time, it's been buying up all sorts of other small companies to add more features to PowerSchool. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of new features popping up all the time with PowerSchool, uh, but their, their quest right now is they're looking for something called the unified classroom where every piece of the classroom can be connected into one program in PowerSchool um, from the content management system to identifying students with special needs and tracking IEP plans and such. Um, some key features of PowerSchool uh, is that it tracks all this information in one place students, their parents, relationships between students, uh, sibling relationships, family relationships. Uh, it's, they've updated recently to be able to handle more complex family structures that uh, are not maybe the standard American four-person household. Uh, has new programs to handle tracking of admissions and enrollment of students, uh, tracking discipline of students, uh, fees, of students and payments of those fees, uh, attendance, grade books, uh, master scheduling, which I handle the master scheduling at Beijing campus, and so it's one of my favorite features because with 250 students, that's really complex. And uh, I'll show you some brief overview of what it looks like for that uh, later. Um, after making master schedules, enrolling the students into the new classes, tracking graduation progress. Uh, we have the three different graduation tracks in Beijing. Uh, as Jeho was saying, we have the regular college track, the STEM track, and then the st full STEM diploma. And it's able to track between those three programs which track the students are on and if they're on track to graduate on time. Uh, we can do all sorts of reporting. We love our reporting. And then it also integrates with third-party APIs and shares information with other platforms, which allows for a lot of cool integrations with other things and making the information that's stored in PowerSchool accessible to other programs. Um, so the access of PowerSchool is handled through three portals. Um, one is the public portal, which is for parents, guardians, and students. Uh, the second is an administrator portal, which is for administrators to run reports, do all the structural stuff. And then the teacher portal for taking attendance, uh, submitting log entries for discipline, and entering their grades. Um, so to go first, look at the public portal um, and what parents are able to do with the public portal. Uh, it's all done in real time. So if it's a change is made for the teacher side, the parents and guardians and students can see it almost instantaneously. Some of our students will set up alerts on their mobile devices, so when a teacher changes a grade, their pocket shakes, they can see if they got a B minus. <laughs> uh, it's a little excessive sometimes, and so there's some controls you can put on that as well. Um, so some of the thing, oh, sorry. Some of the th other things that you can do, uh, you can view teacher comments on grades, that you can see uh, all the assignments. One account can be used for multiple students, so if a parent has two children in your school, they can have one login and they can switch between them. 
Uh, the teachers can upload course information, course descriptions, course syllabus into the system. Uh, we can track the student requests. So when we're doing scheduling, we can have a student have the opportunity to request what classes they want to take. Um, it also restricts what classes they're shown so that they're only shown ones that they can take, um, what, which ones they fulfill the prerequisites for. Uh, and then it can access uh, from any mobile device or cell phone or laptop or computer. Um, it has full HTML5 support and so it can be accessed from basically anything that has a web browser. I joke sometimes with our teachers that they could enter their grades if they had a smart TV. That I don't think it would be very useful, but technically you could. Um, and it also can display third-party information uh, from assessments. So like we use the map assessment at Beijing campus, and so we can upload the results of those tests for parents to see. Um, and that's actually a plugin that uh, was written for our PowerSchool, and I'll talk about those later on. All right, so then the, the admin portal and what you can do. Um, some key things that can be used, it can, you can set up co-teaching, um, which is useful. We have a number of our classes that have more than one teacher that work together. And so both teachers can have full access to the gradebook, um, or they could have partial access to the gradebook, depending on how you set it up, uh, and go into one grade calculation. Uh, in the admin portal, you can set up translations of pages so that uh, it can be shown. The information itself is whatever language is put into the database, but the way that it's shown can be translated into multiple languages. Some of those pages are pre-translated uh, in PowerSchool itself, and some of the ones that aren't, like custom pages and such, you have the ability to add translations on the admin side. Uh, you can track demographic information, so uh, this is really small, I know, uh, but we can track all the demographic information about the students, their name, their address, their birthday, uh, it auto-calculates their age based on their birthday, their ethnicity. All these pieces of information can be tracked in one place uh, that then can be used to set up communication with parents, set up communication with the students' email addresses, uh, and tracked. Um, Attendance can be taken, right, or set up. This is, we can see on the Beijing campus, we have a rolling bell schedule. And so the different colors are the different classes. And if we move between days, the time of the class changes, but we can look and see a week at a time. We can correct attendance issues. We can add notes on attendance issues. So if we're adding an excused absence on the administrative side, we can put a note, student had a doctor's appointment so that the teacher knows that that was an excused absence and that they're excused from their work and whatnot. Right. Um, Mr. Aiello's favorite page, the log entries page. Uh, this page tracks the log entries made for the students. And so a uh, teacher can submit these, other administrators can submit these, and uh, our dorm staff also submit these so that we can see a complete story of the student's time at our school from the very beginning all the way on. Uh, it's also where Mr. I.O. can respond to the log entries. So if I'm a teacher, I submit a log entry, so-and-so was misbehaving in class, he threw a chair through the window, and blah, 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 and then it gets submitted. Mr. I.O. then, when he deals with that problem, can add his response to the end, and the teacher can go back and see how that was handled, and it's all stuck together in one place. Uh, for convenience. All right. um, there's also a health management page so we can track whether or not we are keeping up to date with vaccinations. Uh, the nurse can track how many times a person goes to the nurse's office and we can use that to identify trends and maybe a student is going to the nurse's office to get out of Mr so-and-so's class because he hates that teacher and he goes every time he has that class. We can see that in trend data um, with the health information. We can also track uh, if your student has medical issues, we can put a medical alert that the PE teacher can then see, don't make this kid run when the pollution is really bad because he has really bad asthma. Or art teacher, careful what paint you use, this kid's allergic to blah, blah, blah. 
Um, and so that's something that then can really help out in communication wise. Um, and then we can go into reports. Oh, sorry, mobile. Uh, the, the administrative portal has a mobile version that it automatically switches to if you just go to the website with your mobile device. It detects it as a mobile device, so there's no app you have to download. It's just automatically in its mobile version and it has all sorts of useful features. You can look up a student, you can click on the Find Me button, and it'll tell you exactly where the student <coughs> is at that time. Uh, you can look at their schedule, their grades, you can look at what their walker is, all sorts of information. Um, you can also look up a, a screen with all the students in a class. Um, to protect the students, I've blurred out, but these would all be non-weird pictures. Uh, but so you can see uh, a student, a picture of the student that you're looking for in case it's a student you're not familiar with. You can go like this. I, I've gone to a number of classrooms where it's beginning of the school year, I haven't learned everybody yet. And I was like, uh, uh, yeah, you, I need to talk with you. Right? And so the pictures are really quite helpful with that. Um, so reports are a huge part of um, what we use in PowerSchool. There are hundreds of reports that are pre-built into PowerSchool. Um, and then it offers the ability to customize and create your own reports. Uh, we just recently switched to a brand new report card uh, that we custom built that allowed for more space for comments, right? A traditional American report card, you got the list of classes, the list of grades and like space for two or three words. And we wanted to have more expansive comments that we could show to the parents because those report cards as a boarding school is one of our, our main forms of communication with the parents. The kid's not in trouble, they might not hear from us on a regular basis, but four times a year they get a report card. So we expanded out that uh, description um, similar to what they were talking about with the Gradebook Wizard, where we have three parts to our comments. We have a part that's on what has been taught in the class so far, how the student is performing in the class, and then we also, PowerSchool allows us to track a citizenship. Um, and so we have a comment about how their behavior and citizenship within the school and that class is, um, which allows us to isolate those behavior things from the academic grades. So the grade is academic, not um, behavioral. Um, so some different reports that we, this is the built-in reports, the long list there. Um, we run these every day. I'm running reports in PowerSchool. So, um, for example, one report that we frequently run is a grade distribution. So this shows us every single section of every single class, what the grade distribution is within that. So I can say, hmm, is one teacher failing 80% of their students? Maybe I need to talk with that teacher about adjusting and differentiating that class a little bit more or not punishing their students. Or maybe there's a reason for it and having that conversation can help to identify that. Um, so we can run this, we also run Grade book checks, um, we run these once a week. Um, so as an administrator, I can go into any teacher's grade book that I, as long as I have the right administrative level permissions, not just anybody can go into anyone, but I can go into the grade book and it's a read only version. So I'm not editing the teacher's grade. There's no ambiguity about the ethics of am I overriding a grade that I shouldn't be overriding. I just going into the grade book and I can check. I can see everything that the teacher can see, but I can't change anything. So keeping it kosher there. Um, so yeah, we run these every Monday. We look through every grade book, look for any discrepancies, things that maybe we need to address. Are, has it been three weeks since someone's had a summative assignment? Are they working on a big project? We go have that conversation. But we can run these reports to find red flags with, with teachers. Um, so, Power Scheduler is one of my favorite things because uh, before we used PowerSchool, we were on Gradebook Wizard, which we had to schedule everything by hand. So we were dealing with giant Excel sheets, giant complicated trying to fit every kid into classes and we'd end up with a kid that didn't fit quite right into something and we would get stuck um, 
putting a 10th grader in a middle school science class because it was the only available class that period or whatever. And so it takes a, this allows us to take a lot of that complicated scheduling and it does a lot of the work for us. So we enter all the student requests, use that to get target numbers for each section or target number of sections for each course that we're teaching. We run a s system that will allow us to build the schedule. It builds the best one that it can. It goes through 10,000 different combinations of the possible schedules, which obviously is more than I have time to schedule by hand, uh, and finds the optimal best one. Uh, and then allow it allows you to tweak, right? Because maybe what's optimal for the getting all the students is, isn't necessarily optimal for the teacher. And so tweaking to make it work for the teacher as well, and then running an import, right? So this screen here is uh, the scheduling screen. We've been using the scheduler for six years, seven years? Seven years, yeah. Um, and it keeps all the different previous builds in, and so you can use a previous one as a starting point and import the information. Uh, loading all that information into the scheduler and then uh, you run a build. This one uh, I ran and it got 86% of the students loaded. Right? It was pretty good um, for a first run. This was in the middle of June last year when we were trying to prepare for this school year. So we had almost done scheduling in June for the next school year. Um, and then this page Right, allows you to see a layout of all the different classes. You can drag it, drop it, move it around. Um, so maybe this class, he's, he's got two sections of drama and you want him to not have the schedule change from first semester to second semester. You can drag that around and make it work. And then once you've got that all built, we reload. And so this was after tweaking some of the student requests for classes giving them an alternative instead of their primary request giving them a secondary request and at the time I was loading 156 students and I got all but one of them loaded um, and then it's set right and then there's a drop-in scheduler that you can use uh, that allows you to add students as they come so when a student shows up you look at what their placement data is you look at their request for an elective you hit a button and it gives you their schedule right then um, and so where it used to be for each kid that showed up, it was five, maybe 10 minutes if it was a upper level kid that I'm trying to make sure it meets graduation requirements, it could take 10 minutes to schedule them. Now I figure out what the requests they need are, put it in the computer and it's done. Um, on the teacher side, uh, super easy attendance entering. Uh, you can mark a student tardy, present, and then on the administrative side, you can either excuse that or leave it as an unexcused tardy. Question? Do they give you notifications of absences? So, uh, like we run absences reports once a week. So it flags anyone who has over X number, we can set that. Um, there's a report that we use called an at risk report, which will tell us if they're having bad attendance and or bad academics. Um, and so it gives us students that are flagged that we can say we need to follow up and keep a closer eye on these students. Um, as a teacher, if a student is going to be excused absence and the office knows ahead of time, our attendance clerk will put that into the system ahead of time with a note why they're going to be absent. And so as a teacher, when I'm going to take attendance, there's a little box flagged next to that student that says they're already absent excused, so you don't have to mark them as absent because they're already marked, um, which is helpful. And if it's done a long time ahead of time, you could, as a teacher can view that the student is going to be absent in the future as well. Um, so gradebook wise, uh, they recently, recently two years ago, uh, completely re vamped the gradebook system. Uh, it used to be this really awful Java-based horrendous thing that was a monster to load, right? You'd hit the button and then you could go for lunch and then you'd come back and it maybe would almost be done loading. Um, maybe that was mostly because of Beijing internet, but uh, it was really bad. Um, and they completely redid it and they 
made this new program called Power Teacher Pro. Um, and so I'll walk you through some of the features that uh, it has. But so when you first log in, you're greeted with a list of assignments. So if you hadn't put anything in, obviously this would be blank. Um, but it's a list of assignments. You can click on one to start entering scores, or you could add some new ones. Uh, if you were to add a new one, you get all sorts of cool features that you can add with the assignments. So uh, on the first page here, you give it a name, you put it into a grading category, you say how you want to grade it, and it gives you four options for grading it. The first one is you can grade it by points. So if it's a 25 point assignment, you type in how many points they earned, hopefully based on a rubric or something like that. Um, you can also have it based on percent. So if you just want to put in what percent they got on a test, right? They got 85% of the questions right. You put it in as percent, and then you can still have it be worth a number of points so that you're balancing things out uh, accordingly. Or you can directly enter a letter grade, which will put in the score based on the cutoff scores in the um, grading scale. And then the last one that is really useful for homework and such is they have a collected only. So it's just a checkbox, did the kid turn it in or not? And so it's a great way to track are they doing homework and things like that. Um, the description is got a, uh, what is it, rich text editor. So you can put all sorts of things in there. You can embed pictures. You can embed uh, links to things. You can embed tables, all sorts of information. And so you can make that a really descriptive, like I'll oftentimes just copy and paste from the Word document assignment so that the whole information is all right there in the description of the assignment and the student, when they log into their PowerSchool, if they forgot what you handed out to them in class in the printout, it's on their PowerSchool that they can see and use there. Um, another cool thing that they added is the second tab here, the students. So maybe you're doing some sort of a makeup assignment or maybe you're doing some assignment where you're doing groups where they're working on different things and it's dif differentiated. You can choose to only assign an assignment to certain students. So you can remove the students that aren't doing that assignment from that so that it doesn't show up in their grade book when their parents are logging in and their parents are going, why didn't they turn in that assignment? Well, it wasn't assigned to them. It avoids that whole conversation because it just isn't in their power school. They don't see it at all. Please. That come out of this, you can see how they're doing on each standard based on assignments that are linked to that standard. So that's kind of the entering side um, of a new assignment. If you, once you get all your assignments in there where you want to enter it, you get basically a spreadsheet view where it has the list of the students on the side and you can arrow through and just put the assignments into the categories or the assignments and then hit save. Um, again, this is moving from that Java, now it's HTML5, so it's just a website and anything that can open and load a website, you can use this in. Uh, if you're using something without a keyboard, a big thing over on the side pops up with buttons that you can push to enter the assignments, scores, and you can also put a comment on anything that students then can click a view comment on it. So if someone didn't turn an assignment here, you can put a comment. That little blue button means that there's a comment on that assignment that the student can see why you marked them late or why they got 10 points off. A lot of times our teachers will simply copy and paste the result of the rubric right into that so they can say in this category you got a four, in this category you got a five, right into the comments so that the breakdown of how the assignment was graded is visible to the students. Right. Um, there's a number of built-in reports, right? This one is I feel useful as a quick snapshot of the student, right? You have above the dark black line, the kids are being successful. Below the dark black line, the kids maybe need some extra help. So it's looking at are they passing or not, or are they getting a D or not. Also, how many in that section of that class, how many missing assignments are there? How many late assignments are there? How many incomplete assignments are there? Those are all flags that you can s switch on an assignment. <sighs> Alright, the last thing that I'll look at here is the grading 
weights. Um, in Beijing, we choose to set this at the school level. So all the classes have the exact same weights. You can also not do that. Uh, it's an administrative side choice, but so we have our grades, we've switched it since this, but originally it was 85% was summative grades, right? So we choose in our system, we have a no penalties for practice approach. So homework and practice assignments don't have a final grade implication. So only summative assignments and then our final was 10% and our midterm was 5%. Um, and that's set so all the classes are identical. Uh, if in your school you wanted to set it to 20% projects, 5%, like whatever that would be for your school, you can set that at the school level if you're trying to standardize it, or as a teacher you could leave it unlocked. So the little schoolhouse thing means it's set by the school. If that wasn't there, it would mean that you could change it. The last part I wanted to talk about was integrations. So like I was saying, there's a number of plugins and third party things that can be used with PowerSchool. So the plugins, uh, these are optional parts of PowerSchool. Uh, as a program, it's made to be very, very customizable because they recognize that every school has its own system, has its own way of running things. And so they have all sorts of plugins or modifications that you can make. Some of them are really expensive, pre-made, bought plugins. Um, so option one, you could purchase one, or there are a number of online communities. So I'm uh, a member of this, this community online where it's just a bunch of people who all use PowerSchool that publish some custom-made plugins that they've made. Um, and I've actually published some of the ones that I've made for us back on that website. Um, and it's just an exchange of people that are using PowerSchool so that they can customize and make things more usable. Um, some things that we've added is originally in the way that PowerSchool is made, parents can't see the log entries about their students. And so we wanted, because we're a boarding school, we don't have that level of communication with the parents as much. We wanted to have the log entries visible. But we also didn't want them visible right away because sometimes we have a teacher that says this person would be better served becoming a tuk-tuk driver and dropping out of school. <laughs> Not word for word, but general idea of an actual comment someone made. We don't want that going directly to a parent. And so we have a review process when, <laughs> still can't believe that one. <laughs> when a log entry comes in, all the administrators get an email about it. Mr. Aiello then processes that, makes modifications. Some of our teachers are not English as a first language teachers, and they're writing log entries in English. Sometimes their grammar is not right. Mr. Aiello will tweak it a little bit, right? And then after that, he assigns it to a category, and it becomes visible to parents. And so that's an example of one way we've modified PowerSchool. Um, some other ways that we like to modify, but I haven't gotten around to writing my own plugin, is that adding some dorm features, right? Putting a way to track what room they live in in the dormitory so that we can have all that information in that one, one spot in PowerSchool. Because that really is the power of PowerSchool, <laughs> is that all the information is in one place, you update it in one place and it's not wrong in another place. Right now, Mr. Ayo has a dorm allocation file on his computer. There's one that went out in an email three weeks ago. Which one is the dorm staff going to assign the students to when they show up in two weeks? Right Hopefully Mr. Ayo's. <laughs> but right now, we don't have any way of knowing. So um, there's also a huge community and support system made by PowerSchool called PowerSource. Um, and so uh, we were able to log in there. They have video files showing you how to do a lot of the stuff that's already in PowerSchool. They have um, uh, knowledge base articles for when I make a mistake and break PowerSchool, I can look there and try to figure out how to fix what I did. Hopefully that doesn't happen too often. Um, but it's a great uh, place and they also have exchange boards where you can talk and, and suggest features to PowerSchool. Um, to, for the future. Um, so the other side is third-party integrations. 
Um, there's a PowerSchool API that allows you to link in to PowerSchool in numerous ways. Uh, and with that, you can provide single sign-in opportunities. So one, uh, we use Office 365, and every single one of our students has an Office 365 account. And that then creates, there's an app called Teams, which is more and more focused on education. And so you can have online content management handled through that. And PowerSchool will link with that. So when I update and change a roster because a kid changed their schedule, it moves them in teams. So if they moved from A period General English 10 to C period General English 10, it moves them so that they are able to keep that content that they were working on with them as they move. Um, another thing that we're using this year is Clever. I don't know if anyone's heard of it or used it, but it's a system that will automatically roster kids into classes and teachers as the teacher in a large number of platforms. So like CK12 and Khan Academy as platforms for online practice. Clever will integrate with PowerSchool, take the roster information out of PowerSchool and make courses in Khan Academy, in CK12, in Duolingo, in NewsELA, in Code.org, in CommonLit. All these can get automatically created and if there's changes, it will automatically make those changes for you. Um, and then it also, for most of them, provides a single sign-on. So if you're logged into Clever and you go to any of those sites, it will automatically be logged into those sites. So you don't have the, have the kids memorizing all these different things. Uh, for elementary schools, um, we don't have this, but if you have a webcam on your computer, you can have kids have a QR code on their ID card that the computer can scan and log in so you don't have kids forgetting their passwords and whatnot. Mm -hmm. They just got to scan the QR code that you assign to the student and then they're logged in as that student. Um, yeah, and then Flipgrid, I don't know if anyone is familiar with that. It's uh, Microsoft bought it last year, um, so it integrates, it's eventually supposed to integrate with Office 365, um, it integrates through Clever right now, but it's a system for social media fine your education and so it's like posting videos and so as a teacher you can post a video and it makes a grid and then the students post response videos and things like that. Um, it's pretty cool. If you're looking for a new technology thing to put in the classroom I suggest it. It's, it's fun and exciting and all that. So, I know that was fast and a lot, and it wasn't too detailed about how to do specific things, um, but I know uh, for Nacelle right now, Beijing campus, uh, Yantai campus, uh, 2 plus 1, the French school, Notre Dame, and uh, St. Paul Prep in Minnesota are all using PowerSchool, <coughs> um, and we have been for the past eight years. Um, and we, ch we switched um, as part of the accreditation <coughs> process. Uh, and sometimes it can be a pain in the butt. <laughs> sometimes it can be a challenge to work through some of the things with PowerSchool, but it improves. Um, as a company, they've made a lot of positive changes since we started using it until now. Uh, we've started when it was PowerSchool 8, and now it's PowerSchool 12. And every single time it updates, they make significant improvements and it becomes a much better product. So hopefully if you're interested for your campuses, we can help you guys out. <laughs> so questions. <laughs>